food. I love food so much. Originally, it came from the Detroit food scene, and it was amazing. It was amazing in the way that the New York Times rated it one of the 52 places you needed to go to before the pandemic. It was one of those places which National Geographic talked about as a destination food place. And then I got to come to Philadelphia. I came to Philadelphia as a result of graduating from business school and then having to move here for a firm to give corporations advice that they really don't want to hear, right? But the one benefit is that I get to do it here in Philadelphia with the Philadelphia food scene. It means things like Zahav or veg, right? It means amazing things like bar bon bon, right? Or hygge. Oh, I love the food. I love the food so much. And I think at that moment in time and through most of my life, I considered myself to be like one of those Futurama floating heads, right? Where I got to like imagine myself as just this body that was, you know, getting me from place to place. But it was really my mind. It was my head that I really needed to focus on. First, because it got to eat things like Zahav. And then secondly, it allowed me to do my labor, do my work. Over the years, I realized that I had put on a freshman 15 for every single university I had gone to. <laughs> I was, I would say, about 194 pounds when the story begins, right? And the story begins November 2021, right? So this is a very recent story. And so I'm just doing my thing. I'm doing this thing. I'm helping a business's business, and I'm on a client trip. And an accident occurs. And I don't think much about the accident because I thought it was like, oh, whatever, you know, like my head, it's still doing its thing. I don't need to worry about stuff, right? And then I come back home and I have to go to the doctor. And the doctor gives me his diagnosis, which is chronic obesity too, rude. <laughs> and then secondly, that, that I had to go to another doctor to figure out a little bit more about my injury. But I was like, hold up, hold up, that chronic obesity too. Excuse me, Dr. D, you do not get to say that without presenting a solution. I later learned from his manager that he had said this to many people and many people were just as upset as me, but not a lot of people had asked for a solution. So he hands me the card to, to the expert over at UPenn. And if you learned anything about UPenn as I learned about UPenn, they have an expert for everything there. Right? I come from Detroit. We have like an expert one of something, something, right? You have an expert of everything here in this city. And it blows my mind. So I find a weight management expert. And so it's like, it's like something out of like, it's like something out of, quite frankly, a pornography where you're like, everyone in this doctor's office is beautiful, right? Everyone is just this perfect hourglass. And I thought I was beautiful, right? Like, my tits were phenomenal, for one thing. Secondly, I had the arse of a rapper's girlfriend. I was doing fine. I was pretty sure I was doing fine. But then when I walked through this office, I was suddenly very self-aware that I was no longer a floating head or a Nicki Minaj wannabe. I was, I was someone who was sick. I needed to actually face the idea that I needed to do something. I needed to change. I think it was really scary, the idea that I was possibly staring down a surgery and that my body was working against me. It was the idea that, gosh, I need to make sure I don't mess up this surgery, right? It's upcoming. So, I talked to the doctor, who is beautiful. Of course she's beautiful. And Dr. B is like, listen, I'll take you on as a client if you agree to do everything I tell you to do. One of the things you need to know about me is I am a disestablishmentarian, and I do not take well to authority. I do not follow directions very well. And I was desperate. So I said, OK. This woman was having me exercise. This woman was changing my diet, right? She made it such that I would only take eight ounces of protein and two cups of vegetables per day. <sighs> Week one, okay, I can do this. I've been a vegetarian all my life. I'm doing tofu. Week two, captain's log, more tofu, more vegetables. Captain's log, week number 10, more tofu, more vegetables. I'm going crazy, right? There's so much tofu and so much vegetables. But the thing is, it's not even the fun vegetables, you see. It's not the squash, it's not the corn. It is not 
wonderful things like candied maple Brussels sprouts, like something I would have at uh, Veg or Zahav, right? It was dry bones, no, no, no oil, no fat, no salt, just hot sauce. I was like Clinton's purse, you know, Hillary Clinton's purse. It was just hot sauce everywhere <laughs> as I'm taking it to restaurants, right? And I think the thing that blew my mind is I didn't realize how much I needed that food. I didn't realize that the food was what was getting me through grad school. It was that experience of being able to have a beautiful lager with those wonderful hoppy notes and that well-bodiedness. Remember, I come from Michigan. We have the most beer per capita of any other state in the country. And here I was no longer able to have Founders or Bells or any of the beautiful breweries that had been so much part of my conversational identity. I was no longer able to talk about my untapped profile because I was no longer drinking anymore. And that was the other thing. I didn't realize how much the drinks were part of what was getting me through my mind in my life. And so, the surgery is coming up, it's later this year. I lost 55 pounds since October. And the thing is, nobody tells you that it's just the beginning when you decide to go on a massive weight loss journey, right? Nobody tells you that you are completely changing your life, changing your relationship with your body, your skin starts to get loose. You start to see stretch marks that you never noticed were there. You start to see the old self. I still see that 194 per, uh, pound version of myself overlaying across this current body as I look in the mirror and it confuses me because I didn't want to do this. I just kept telling myself, I don't wanna mess up my surgery, right? I just, I cannot mess up my surgery. I cannot be the reason that that UPenn doctor who's about to perform it messes up his record. He is a faculty member, he is a professor, and he has something he needs to publish, right? I don't know, I don't know what it is, but I just know that all that matters is that I've managed to finally get into these little Miss Bossy Pants.